Nous avons repoussé de loin pour qu'ils ne puissent pas tuer nos populations. Puisqu'ils bombardent avec les mains là où se trouve la population. Alors, parmi, nous avons récupéré beaucoup d'armes, beaucoup de munitions. Et surtout, messieurs les journalistes, nous avons capturé beaucoup de prisonniers de guerre. Une ribambelle de prisonniers de guerre. Et parmi ces prisonniers de guerre... The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called Rwanda's President Paul Kagame to persuade him against taking part in a direct armed conflict with neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. Guterres's call came amid heightened security tensions between Kigali and Kinshasa over the M23 rebellion in the DRC. The Rwandan government on Tuesday night said President Kagame had a productive phone conversation with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on the worrying escalation of armed violence and ethnic rhetoric in Eastern DRC. Guterres is the second high-profile international figure after United States Secretary of the State Antony Blinken to call Kagame in less than a week over the deteriorating relations between Rwanda and DRC. Fighting between Congolese forces and M23 rebels who are reportedly backed by Rwanda has worsened in recent days in North Kivu. The M23 rebels on Monday seized several strategic territories near the provincial city of Goma, such as Nyakabingu, Kawalekasha, Bulungu, Lujebeshe, and Tebelo. Feeling that M23 were planning to attack Goma DRC, President Felix Tshisekedi on Sunday directed Army Commander General Christian Tshiwewe to head to the city or to access the security situation and beef up defenses. General Tshiwewe flew from Kinshasa to Goma yesterday as Congolese forces battled M23 rebels in the north of Nilagongo, about 20 kilometers from Goma. Monusco Force Commander Brigadier General Octavio Rodriguez de Milando last week reported that M23 rebels were advancing towards the south along the National Road and from Provincial Road towards Sake, a city which is intended to be an essential point in the defense of Goma. During his call with Guterres, President Ikagame Retaliated his view that the solution is not a military one but a political one. Kagame and Guterres also discussed continued strong collaboration towards peace and stability in DRC through ongoing regional efforts. Blinken on Monday spoke separately with Kagame and DRC's leader, President Felix Tshisekedi, over the volatile situation and worsening humanitarian crisis along the border between Rwanda and the DRC. He advocated for a diplomatic solution to the tensions between the two countries and urged each side take measures to de-escalate the situation including removing troops from the border. Both Rwanda and DRC have been strengthening their military deployments along their common border. DRC recently started deploy deploying over 40,000 newly trained regular forces near the Rwandan border saying the soldiers were intended to counter the M23 rebels. Kigali, according to informed officials, strongly believes the DRC intends to attack Rwanda. Sources told said that the DRC also suspects that Kigali is planning to capture Goma. For months, clashes between Congolese forces and armed groups have taken place in the territories of Masisi, Uchuru and Nilangongo. The recent fighting has caused the displacement of around two of 300,000 people. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Somalia is experiencing the worst flooding in decades. According to Reuters, 29 people have been killed and more than 300,000 displaced. This as the country is reeling from the worst drought in 40 years. 
Joining us for a perspective on these developments in Somalia is journalist Abdella Ahmed Mumi, Secretary General of the Somali Journalist Syndicate, an umbrella organization for the country's media. At least 29 people have been confirmed dead uh, since the floods have started in the, in the last two days. And the local authorities, especially the National Disaster Management of Somalia, says 850,000 people have been affected. These are floods in nine regions in Somalia, including the capital city, Mogadishu. Just for example, the airport, the main airport in Mogadishu, has been severely affected by the floods. And not only that, local people, the population in Somalia, who have been grappling with a long, prolonged decades of humanitarian crisis, are now starting also to uh, struggle with the flooding. IOM, the Organization for International Migration, says it is believed that more than 113,000 people have fled their homes. One of the worst crises has been described uh, to have happened in several towns in Somalia. I can give you an example. The town of Lok, which is located in the Gedo region, more than 2,000 people are now affected because they are completely cut off and they need an immediate emergency assistance. And similarly in the town of Baidawa, across other country, uh, regions of, of the country, this is something that the local populations are saying they haven't been witnessed for the past decade, uh, 10 years, this is the worst flooding in Somalia. So in a way, therefore, as you said, uh, can we say that the floods are a good thing for Somalia? After all, as you said, Somalia has been experiencing drought for many, many years. Somalia has been experiencing drought for many years, that's right. But this time, I think it's not the right time for the flooding. First of all, the local populations are vulnerable. These people have been struggling to look for food, something to survive. For example, I, the UN says more than 6 million Somalis are in need of emergency food aid because of the drought. And think about those who have been unable to meet their ends are now struggling to get the survival because their homes have been submerged and they cannot return back home and they cannot look for food. So this is completely another disaster after disaster. Abdallah Mumi is the Secretary General of the Somali Journalist Syndicate, an umbrella organization for media in Somalia. He